Make sure we're ready. As long as we're ready, I'd like to welcome everyone to the first uh, city council meeting in our government services building, although it's an annex. It's the first time we've had a city council meeting not at sit the old city hall for decades. So if you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation which will be brought by Councilman Thompson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please pray with me. Father, we come to you again. We ask for your presence among us and I ask that you just guide us. Father, there's a lot of things going on in this city, and we do recognize you blessed us with growth, and we're, we're leaning forward in the foxhole here, and we ask that you just be with us, and we recognize you are leading us and guiding us. So help us as we make these decisions. Father, also thank you at this time of the year for graduates. They are looking uh, forward to the summer and for rest, and then help them uh, give them that rest and bless them through this summer and get ready for the next year. And then those from college or universities that are going on to to new careers, be with them, watch over them. Father, we thank you and we ask for your blessing in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Right along. Moving on to uh, our city council meeting agenda, the first item on tonight's agenda are items that are not on uh, the agenda tonight, as citizens' opportunities to speak about items not on tonight's agenda. If you'd like to stand and uh, take the podium, you're welcome to state your name and address and address the city council. Sorry to hear about the issues, you had it the other place. <clears throat> My name is Heidi Brenner, uh, 13930 Wooden Road, and I was here I think about a month ago. Uh, I already the venue the, to the west of me. I know we don't have a microphone, so you can't hear me. I tend to speak softly, so if you can't hear me, just yeah. um, I This has to do with the venue next door that's directly to the west of my property um, that I spoke about with the issues that we've been having as far as noise and the neighbors. Um, uh, I spoke with Rachel, the city, I don't know, whatever she is, which was, <clears throat> all she did was tell me that there was nothing they were doing wrong because, um, and I don't know if this is going to come a shock to you guys, but she said there was nothing in that special use permit that had anything to do about the noise issue, the traffic issue, any of the concerns that, now I know you guys, I saw you guys at the meetings. I know you guys heard. Um, our, now, the issue with the special use permit is, did any, how many of you guys saw the special use permit and signed it? Okay, but you guys all saw the special use permit. Who, it, who is it that draws that up? What we need to do is to get to the bottom of why none of the, the concerns of uh, the, uh, the residents were mentioned apparently in that special use permit all. and I'd like to come two weeks from now I'd like to come back and see if I can we'd like to see if we can get a copy of that special use permit to see for ourselves but for some reason some unknown reason to all of us none of those issues were mentioned in that, so that special use permit so of course the owners aren't going to address any of our concerns because they don't have to and like Rachel said well they're complying with everything because there was nothing in there that they had to comply with except I think the time which I mean, my gosh, the time is not the issue. Um, so what we'd like to do, and Mickey, unfortunately Mickey helped us out of, is out of town right now, or he'd be here too. Um, and so again, the concern that we have is that we can hear, I can hear that music in my home with the windows closed until 11.30 at night. Now he spoke to the owner, and I apologize, I don't know their name, and I don't know their address. They're the, the home that's right at the corner, the southwest corner of 142nd Street in Williams. And he was talking <coughs> to them, I guess they had a yard sale or something on the weekend. And they said, they can hear it in their home too, and they thought it was coming from the high school. 
And so, I mean, the two of us that are directly there have to listen to this music. I, I've had a couple of people that have actually gone to the event that I've talked to, gone to events that I've talked to, and they said there's absolutely no soundproofing. It's just, I mean, it's a tin can butler building for all intents and purposes. This is what they put up. I mean, it was constructed in about a week and a half. There was, and he said, you can't even hear yourselves think in that building. It's so poorly constructed. Um, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to see a copy of that <coughs> for a minute. We'd like to see questions as to why none of the, especially traffic issues and the noise, the noise issues, that they agreed to the fact that that venue would be self-contained, that the noise would be self-contained within that venue. None of that was put in or addressed in the special use permit according to Rachel. Now, I have to say I have not seen that yet, but this is, I have reason to believe that she would not be telling me that these things were not in there. So again, it's why the owners are not making any any effort whatsoever. I and mean, they had an event there Saturday night, which I mean they do there pretty much every Saturday. There's a busload of kids that I, 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 I'm thinking maybe it was a graduation or something. But you know, it came right down Wynn and Row, and they're making no effort whatsoever to steer even busloads of people to use and instructing them to use 147th Street. I mean, there's absolute. There they used to have a sign. Um, to leave the venue that said right turn only, that sign is down. I mean, that's, there's no sign up there anymore. There's never been a security guard. That was part of their agreement that they would have a security guard out there having, telling people to turn right to go down 142nd Street um, there. And I, I mean, now I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to, I'm just going to start calling the police, which I hate to use the police resources for something like noise and noise in every every Saturday evening. But, I mean, I don't know, I honestly don't know what else to do. There, I mean, we try to be good neighbors, as I expressed before. I, mean, we, I let them use my water before it was, they had water, and of course they said, yeah, I'll pay for it, and I would not have taken any money for it. But, you know, just to not even come and say, hey, what do I owe you, or thanks for letting me use your water. Or you know, using my big tractor as <coughs> my help move dirt with this pack. I mean, it's as soon as as soon as they left this place, as soon as they got what they wanted from you guys, they're done. I mean, it's 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 history. And uh, according to Rachel, I guess that special years permit it just continues. It's not. We were told at the meeting, and maybe I misunderstood that that it was either renewable or if they didn't pay attention or adhere to the rules. That, or not the rules, but the stipulations that were in that special use, then it could be pulled. Well, of course they don't care about that because apparently there's nothing, there's no stipulations, no anything in the in the special use permit. So, um, so that's what I'm asking. Is two weeks from now, if we can come back and see a copy of the special use permit, if we could um, get some. And now I know the city, the city planner guy, um, the, Don Sloan is retired, and so I know that was probably his last hurrah was to get this thing through, um, and, but, but we would like some answers as to why none of the concerns were addressed in that special use permit. Um, Heidi, you mentioned uh, you had some friends or acquaintances that went to the meeting, mm -hmm. uh, to that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they left. Think, he left because he couldn't hear himself. Okay, mm -hmm. now, <clears throat> you were saying acoustics. Um, I think all of us at some point or another have been in uh, those environments, uh, regardless of what it was, a wedding reception, and a graduation and stuff. And it's been, uh, at least my observation, that uh, the sound uh, and the person, the DJ or however it's being done, is not controlling the volume. Because we've been, you know, my wife and I, and, and agree uh, that is not something that's enjoyable when you can't talk with other people. Right. Um, but you were using the acoustics because that's um, because of the butler building, as you call it, kind of a right. tin building right. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm wondering if there's any correlation there between there not being any uh, limits on the, on the, on the volume. Um, I, I'm sure there was a correlation. Um, our, under, our understanding was that that, uh, sorry, you can our understanding was that all noise was to be self-contained within the venue, particularly the music and the sound. Now they did say there were going to be some 
weddings outside and in the weeds and the surrounding trees, which, you know, I mean, there's just some noise there, but, and they have a little outdoor patio, so of course there's many, but they said all the noise and music and everything is going to be self-contained in that venue, and it is absolutely not. I mean, there is, and they had to know going into it, and they're supposed to be, one of the owners was also supposed to be on site during the event, and either there is no owner on site that's making sure that you can't hear the noise or they just don't care. And I have to believe they don't care because they don't have to. Because there is nothing that you guys aren't going to come to them and say, hey, you're 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 too noisy. And they say, well, show us in the special permit where it says we have to control our noise. And so, you know, I mean, they're good businessmen. They knew that, I mean, they knew that it wasn't in there and they were going to take care of the rules. But to um, I me, mean, that's not being neighborly. And that is not, they assured us all that the integrity of our little rural area would be preserved, which is why we live there. I mean, we could live in Johnson County. I could live anywhere in Johnson County if I wanted. But I don't. I love my land. I love my piece of pipe. I love my, the fact that my mom, my 91 year old mom, comes over. And I mean, during tax season, I came home on Saturday night before April 15th, dead from about 8.30 at night from the office, wanted to go to bed because I was going to have to get up at 5.30 in the morning to go back to the office Sunday morning, and I couldn't, go to, I couldn't even go to sleep because that boom, 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 the pounding, you know, of the bass, that just, it just rever reverberates. And, and they're just, I hate to see all of us, you guys included, being taken advantage. I just don't think that's right because we're a great city and I love this city. When Bill, when I moved down here from Southern California and got married, I mean, it's just a great place to live. And I just, I hate to see us being taken care of. We want to be good neighbors. Uh, we try to be good neighbors, but... No, anyway, I, I'm taking oh, it off your time. To, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. When you spoke at the last meeting, I, I think the intent was that the staff's going to try to get you and communication with the owners because you were having a problem. Did that yes. ever occur? Um, I haven't been to able to, to call him because I'm just, I'm so upset that I just, I want to see what they, I don't feel like I have, maybe ammunition is not the right word, but I would prefer to see the special use permit first. I would prefer to see why it was written such that it was written, why there were no stipulations in there and get a little more background with you guys because they know. I mean, right. they know the noise is an issue. Well, special use permit is a matter of public record. So that, you should be able to see a so copy of it. So I can just go on to your guy, the guy Yeah, in fact, the I website. think they're on the website. They're on the planning department. Yeah. 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 I think also with the last agenda or the agenda prior to that, you also put a copy of it in there for my request. Wanted to see it. Uh -huh. I think you would have. Yeah. So you could go on to the city council agenda for <coughs> Do you know what, um, I don't know the date that those minutes would, I don't know what, I mean, I know where the minutes are, because I've seen the minutes, but is there a particular... Um, I think it was the first meeting in April, I believe, where you attached the, yeah. I think... That was the city council meeting, yeah. Oh, the one that I attended. Okay. Well, oh, if you're at the well, if they go to the meeting after that, they put okay. it, they had a, as part of that packet, which is online, Okay. they may put a copy of the special use permit. Oh, the special use permit there. So you'd be able to view it there as well. Okay, I'll, I'll go out there and see. Yeah, I think that was probably April 15 to 14. Hey, you guys offered to buy them out. Did I, did I offer to buy them out? Yeah, in all seriousness, have you guys thought of or thought to offer to buy them out? Oh, no, no. I, uh, I can't have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it had had the original people, that was originally zoned for an SFE. Yeah, which, that was into it. Yeah, which fell through the cracks. Um, they, they, and I had talked to them. They were a very, very nice young couple, and they said that it was too expensive to build one residence, which I wish they would have let us know, because Sean, you guys know Sean, I mean, that's his business. He's into construction, and he would have seen to it that he could have built them a house that they would have been able to afford and just to keep that, that bearing in there. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much they put into that so far, but... And I and you know, truth be told, I mean, a venue. It's not exactly. I don't love having one next door, but compared to having what, what it's originally Cibo or it's supposed to be sixty or, or eighty apartments, wasn't it? Yeah, it was going to be a lot of which we knew that wasn't going to fly either because the guy was going to pay for sewer. I mean, we tried to tell him that in the beginning. 
But anyway, that's another story. And so, I mean, that's why we try to be good neighbors, because we thought this will only be, there'll be traffic around there maybe one evening a week um, for half the year, and we can deal with that. And if you go back to the April 8th council meeting and the agenda, that special use permit is attached to the city manager's report. It's the final attachment. Okay, so I will, you can read it. I will certainly do that. And then we just need to find out why it was that none of this, none of the concerns were, were put into that, and, and who wrote that. Um, my concern is yeah, it's got all the signatures and all the notes from the meetings and everything attached. Okay, great. Well, anyway, thank you guys, and um, I'll hurry back in a couple of weeks see what we can we can do because I mean we really do want to work with them. Um, we know it's not going anywhere. Um, I don't want to go anywhere. But we just feel like um, we're all being taken advantage of. You know, I need that. Well, I, <laughs> I really don't have a lot of patience with being taken advantage of. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for all. coming back and uh, expressing your concerns. Again, like uh, Councilman Stevens said, I think it's a good idea to start a, a opening up a dialogue between both of you. And giving you this information, I think, will prepare you to be able to <clears> talk <throat> with them and hopefully remedy some of these concerns that you have. Yeah, because yeah, he won't answer any of my texts. And I know why he won't answer any of my texts, because then that's legally acknowledging that he's received that. Right now, he can say, oh, I never got it. You know, so, I, so I, I mean, I probably... And he also he mentioned, um, and I don't know if it was personal observation or what, that there was nobody um, security outside and owners on the premises. Uh, and, and do, you know that? do you know that for a fact? Well, is that a personal observation um, or assumption? Personal observation is that I've never seen anybody walk in the parking lot or being um, posted at the exit. Okay. To make, so that is personal observation. Okay. Um, you said the sign. The sign is gone. Okay. There used to be one that said turn right to right. go down to. And so, then there was supposed to be somebody making them do that. That was stipulated at the meeting. So they're on. Now, as far as an owner being on site, I'm, pre I, I'm trying to be positive and saying there's nobody there because I hate to think that there was an owner there and they just didn't care about it. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm kind of trying to give them the benefit of the doubt by saying, well, we're not there, so. It, it's been yeah. some time since I reviewed that uh, special use permit. I know there's um, legal specifications on what can be in a special use permit. I don't know who generated it. I would imagine our planning department who at that time, I don't know. But uh, those are good concerns and, and those need to be addressed and looked at, educated both sides to what uh, the requirements are. Um, special use permits usually stay with the property and are, are, are not. Uh, and when a property changes hands, um, uh, other than that, I think there's some contingents, as I recall, for violations of certain sections, but yeah. I, I'd have to research right. it myself, and I, I'd refer you to the special use permit and then reach out to the... And that's the, the problem, is that there there's no violations because there's nothing in it, and I have I don't know that that's the case. Well, I was going to say, I might add one more thing, too, if the, if the staff is able to give you the date on when that planning commission meeting took place, because special a, use permits come through the planning commission. Yeah, that's where the that. hearing just takes place. You can see what the comments are, not only of the public, but also yeah. of the commission members. Yeah, I just hope so there were copious of I just hope there were Oh, is it all the whole okay, thing is attached? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my concern is that it's, there's nothing in the special use. And, and I, I also have the benefit of the, the firm that I work for. We do city audits. We do a couple of city audits here in Kansas and do a couple of government um, cities. And, and so I'm very familiar with the way special use permits and the way commissions and the way funds and all kinds of things. So it's kind of interesting to hear me before we get here. Um, and so I have the benefit of knowing some city clerks and being able to discuss them with them, special use permits. And so um, I feel like that was very beneficial to me to know and to know that we can resolve this issue. Very good. It can be resolved. Um, Great. And so that everybody, if not completely happy, my when my 93 year old aunt that the nun comes in July, she'll be able to sleep. <laughs> or or I can sign for those people because you don't want a nun to be the stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you guys. Thank Certainly. you very much. Anyone else that'd like to address the city council? Seeing none, we'd move along to the consent agenda. The consent agenda will include the minutes of the April 22nd meeting. Claims for city operation. 
public housing authority claims, the first quarter 2019 financial report, and the HUD 2019 public housing authority income limits. Is there anything to be pulled by the staff, um, citizens, questions or concerns from the council? I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, move to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Move and second date. Vote, please. What? What? Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes. Kevin? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Thompson? Yes. <clears throat> Motion passes. Very good, thank you. And uh, moving right along to the regular meeting agenda, the first item is the Whitewater Master Plan acceptance. I believe we're going to table that until after the presentation and move right, uh, I'll Sorry, take a motion to, to uh, table that. And entertain a motion to table item number one. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to table item number one of the regular meeting agenda. Second. Do we have to state the name? It will move to the next. Okay. Very good. Moved and seconded. No concerns. Vote, please. Stevens? Yes. Kip? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Wood? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Uh, Shannon? Yes. Motion passes. On to item number two, which is the wastewater master plan acceptance. Water. We did see water. I'm sorry. Uh, water master plan acceptance. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're also going to table this one. No, no, no. This one. Yeah, this is something different. We're going to ask for a staff presentation, right? Now. Good evening, Frank Abart, Public Works Director. This will be a very short presentation. You just spent an hour, I guess, getting a pretty good, pretty good flavor for the actual master plan and what's in it related to the, the water and the business. Uh, so with that, uh, staff recommends that you go ahead and do a formal acceptance of the master plan and uh, entertain any questions if you have them at this point. Thank you. Very I'm much. sure we're going to be talking a lot more about. This, so. <laughs> yeah, when we ask for money. Thank you very much. Anything else to add by staff, <coughs> citizens? <coughs> Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to accept the water master plan. Yes. Moved and seconded. Uh, questions, concerns, comments? We'll start down here. Sir? No, too bad the, we didn't have a lot of public here to hear this. It's, it's going to come, we're going to have to make some hard decisions coming up in a few months. And we're actually waiting to see all this. Lots of work goes into that. How thick was that? Two inches? Inch? Yeah, that's pretty thick. Anything else? Yeah. Anything else? Uh, vote, please. Becky? Yes. <clears throat> Stevens? Yes. Wood? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Yes? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Motion passes. Anybody who's not thirsty before that is thirsty yeah. now. <laughs> On to item number three, the ordinance to authorize the issuance of approximately $9,980,000 of general obligation bond series 2019 budget. That's Mayor a pretty Council, <laughs> Tilly, the plant finance director. We sold the bonds this morning, and David Arterberry, our financial advisor, is going to explain the sale and the amount. And we also have Adrian Serene and Tyler Ellsworth with our bond council if you have any questions for them. Um, good evening. I'm Dave Rodberg, George K. Bond. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, before I get into the results of the sale, I do really want to quickly mention uh, the rating that the city went through. And I, I think you have in your agenda packages a copy of the rating report. Um, it's always kind of good to go through, I think, and look at that and, and spend a few minutes, if you've got time, to see how sort of a third party agency views your finances. And I'm pleased to report, as in the past, they view it very positively. Um, they point in their sort of their recap, they point to you as having a strong or very strong uh, management 
um, budgetary flexibility and budgetary performance and very strong liquidity. Um, and what I think is really nice about those items is, is that in terms of their evaluation of credit, those are the things that you as, as um, a governing body and staff have direct control over. Um, so they, they rank the things that you have direct control over very, very, very well. Um, they also sort of, on, on the other side, things that they look to probably be things that maybe you could improve upon a little bit, things that maybe are holding your rating back from being uh, higher than it already is, is things like um, they point to your, your wealth and income levels, your, your assessed value per, um, per capita, uh, as well as your uh, income levels, are a little bit below the national average. So, so that's something uh, that they sort of view as not as favorable. Um, they also point to your debt levels, which I think particularly with the addition of the, the building projects, they view your debt levels as uh, starting to rise a little bit. And that is somewhat common for um, communities that are in growing areas is to have their debt levels rise as they, they build up the infrastructure for the, for the growth. So I've got a question for that. On a debt level, yeah. the debt level of what? Like, I, I know like the common term with real estate is like DTI, but what are we, a level against what? What they look at, they particularly cited um, uh, debt service carrying charges, in other words, your annual payment as a percentage of your overall expenditures. Okay. Uh, they said that that was at about 7.2%, which they consider to be a little bit high. Uh, and then they also look at um, your total debt um, as a percent of total governmental revenue. So they look at both your annual payments as a percentage of your budget as well as your total debt as a percentage of your budget. Okay, so it's essentially income as well. Yeah, yeah, both of those ways. Um, but overall, though, the, the result was very positive. Your, your rating was confirmed at a double A minus uh, level, which is a very, very good rating. Um, and that's, you know, taking into account the fact that you'll be issuing a very significant amount of debt for the, the new building projects. Um, so it was a really good report. And that sort of culminated in what I think was, a, again, a very good bidding um, response that we got today. Um, we set the bid deadline at 11 o'clock today. So uh, we met down here in this room um, probably about 10.30 or so and got set up and we're monitoring all of the bids as they come on. They're, the bids appear on a, an internet bidding site called the Parity Bidding Site. And we monitored the bids and at 11 o'clock they were all received and the results, I think you've got a copy of them here in front of you. You've got a total of uh, seven bids. Um, the bids range from 2.743692% uh, submitted by Robert W. Baird um, to a little over 2.93% uh, uh, submitted by SunTrust. Um, and you look there and all the bids are really, particularly the first three bids are really grouped in closely together, which tells you you got some, some really good aggressive bidding on it. Uh, the best bid was submitted by Robert W. Baird, uh, and that's their, their true interest uh, percentage rate there, the 2.736%. Uh, Robert W. Baird usually doesn't submit their bid alone. Usually they have other banks that join in with them to help distribute the bonds. And in this case, I'm pretty sure, although I can't confirm it, I'm pretty sure uh, their syndicate included a lot of local banks that are big purchasers of bonds, like UMB and Country Club Bank and Commerce Bank. So I, I'm guessing that all of those were involved in the distribution of your, your bonds. Um, so the bids were received. After we got the bids, we, we verified that they're mathematically correct and that they met all the bidding parameters. And then actually because of the way that they structure and they, they submitted their bid, um, they actually bid with a premium which um, we didn't need that premium in sizing the bond issue, so, or I'm sorry, we didn't need that premium to help fund the project costs. So what we did is we reduced the size of the bond issue from 9980 million down to the final principal amount was 9320 uh, You'll still have all the money that we anticipated for, uh, for this phase of building the building projects as well as the refinancing that we did, um, but it just, we were able to do that with a, a little bit smaller bond issue because the way they constructed their bid. Mm -hmm. um, the, the refinancing I just mentioned uh, involved paying off early uh, your 2011 bond issue. 
And as a result of doing that, we were able to, um, the city's going to be able to realize um, about $237,500 in savings um, by refinancing those older bonds at a lower interest rate. Um, in addition to that, uh, the remaining bond proceeds, um, about $5,840,000 will be available to pay for the building projects. Uh, again, our plan is that um, that money will last hopefully until sometime early next year. At that time, you'll have a, a better idea of what the final project cost would be. And at that time, we would do the second phase of borrowing to complete financing for the building projects. But the rates on these bonds are uh, quite a bit lower than what we had been anticipating in some of our mill levy projections. So hopefully that means uh, ultimately, after that next phase of borrowing is done, it's going to uh, result in a lower payment and a lower mill levy than was originally anticipated. I've got a question. Oh, the, yeah. the question on the issuance, why didn't we accept the full amount? You said the premium. Is that premium meaning we could have uh, accepted that amount? Well, um, the reason um, you could have accepted the, the premium that they gave us, um, they, they bid with a premium of about $500,000. Uh, if we had accepted that premium, the principal amount of the bonds would have been nine million nine eighty, and the, the the premium would have put us then to the total amount of proceeds that you would have received, uh, about ten and a half million dollars. Okay. The problem with doing that is if we go over ten. Yeah, exactly. We, we we lose what we call the bank qualified status of the bonds, and um, it, we don't get quite as good of an interest rate. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Great. Covered a lot of ground there. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, some of the important factors were the savings that we saw and then also the reduction, and hopefully that will contribute to a more help. So thank you, and I appreciate your whole team. I have another question yeah. for you. I think you might be the one to ask. I know that uh, we've got several different people here on it. Uh, with the investment of this, we're getting, what was it, you said, five million what? Five million eight hundred forty thousand uh, will be available for the building projects. Okay. I was reading through the docs and there's a paragraph in there about investment uh, it, this is I'm paraphrasing but we're essentially free to invest in how the city sees fit are we able to put that into CDs into local entities or local banks yeah yeah the, um, the, the, there are restrictions in the statutes as to how you can uh, invest the money but that would be one of the eligible investments right. would, be, would be CDs um, there's also um, another alternative is the state's municipal investment pool. Um, so there's a variety of places that you can park the money. Now, we talked a little bit about that today and some discussions that, um, I guess, staff has ongoing with the banks about CDs and collateral and that kind of stuff. Okay. The reason I was asking is I looked at local interest rates and UBT here in Bonner has, I think it's 278 uh, for a one-year interest rate on their current CD for one year or above, and I was curious how we'd go about looking into that, because we're supposed to be getting the money, uh, or essentially I should ask, when do we get the money? Um, closing is scheduled for the 5th of June, I believe. So that's when you'll the, you'll get the, yeah, you'll get all the money on the, on the 5th of June. Would we be able to, um, I guess I can't remember what the technical or the accounting term is, but like rainfall it, or like three, six months of money? Yeah. It, um, Part of the money, the money that's going to pay off the old bonds, um, the, the old bonds are going to be called on September 1. So all of that money is, it needs to go into an account that will be available on September 1. Yeah. The other money um, that's for the building projects, yeah, that's you, you could ladder some CDs if you wanted to. or um, And I said, I'd probably turn to Tilly and talk, ask her about the practice on how they would invest yeah. money. But, one thing we are doing is, um, I talked to, Sean and I talked a little bit during the meeting, um, they're going to request from um, the construction managers the, the anticipated draw schedule for the building projects. So we have longer use of our own funds. Yeah, so if it, if it shows that, you know, you're only going to need $2 million for these first six months, then you can take the balance of it and invest it out a little bit longer to try to get a little bit better rate of return. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, Mr. Sure. Very good. Thank you. Anything else to add? Staff? Others? Seeing none, I entertain a motion.
we don't need to change the amount on the keep envelope. the amount at the 9, nine Nine three twenty. So that's how we reflect the So, Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance to authorize the issuance of general obligation bond series 2019-A in the approximate amount of nine million three hundred twenty thousand. Second. Exactly. Move we'll and second. Questions, concerns, comments. We're all on the same page. Ten. Good morning. Motion or vote, please. Yes. Wood. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Mackey. Yes. Stevens? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. On to item number yeah. Item number four, a resolution to prescribe the form and details and authorize the delivery of GEO Bond series twenty nineteen in the approximate amount of nine million three hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Uh, anything to add staff wise? No. I'd entertain a motion. Oh, citizens, either? No. I'd entertain a motion. Yes, just please. Really quickly again, um, just note the action item in your packet is 9980. The, the action needs to be 9320 or 9320. Nine, 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 okay. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve a resolution to prescribe the form in details and authorize the delivery of GO bonds series. 2019-A in the approximate amount of 9320000 Second. Moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comment? We'll start down here with the senators. No? No more. No. Nothing? Let's go building. Yeah. Vote, yeah. yeah. oh, please. Wood? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Kim? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Curley? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Motion very good. Um, thank you all very much. I believe this is the largest bond that Barnes Prince has ever done. Yeah, I'd have to look. I think it probably yeah. might be. Might be? Might be, yeah. Anyway, thank you all very much. Full team. On to uh, item number five, which is SFF Architecture. SFS Architectural Amendment number two. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Staff. Uh, quickly, you have attached in the agenda amendment two, which covers fees for additional services beyond uh, phase one uh, portion of the project. This includes bidding services, um, which have already been completed, and then construction excuse me, construction administration services related to both the police station and city hall buildings. Uh, there's also some additional uh, Costs or services that were rendered during the construction or excuse me, the design phase of the project, those are listed. Uh, fire alarm work as well as some additional sidewalk work around the community center. Um, the end goal of this SFS architecture, it is hard to say one <laughs> um, is also here if you have any specific questions uh, related to the amendment. But uh, again, this is um, for the project that you just had geo bonds issued for, uh, and looking for approval of this amendment. Thank you. Anything to add? Very good. I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to recommend approval of amendment number two to the agreement for the architectural services between the City of Monarch Springs, Kansas, and the SFS Architectural Incorporated. Second. Move and seconded. Um, questions, concerns, comments? You should be giving you a hard time. I, know, I, I, I was going to let it just ride. No additional services. Anything? No? Sure. <laughs> Seeing none, vote please. Mackey? Yes. Wood? Yes. Kip? Yes. Early? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, our uh, present location kind of underlines the how uh, important this is to us, so thank you. Moving along to item number six, our charter ordinance number 36. Very exciting staff. Um, charter ordinance number 36 repeals charter ordinance number eight, which was passed in 1980-something, I think it was, and then repealed later by an ordinance, which isn't appropriate, has been repealed by a charter ordinance. Since then, we have handled these items through policy. So, the charter ordinance number six would repeal charter ordinance number eight, 
ordinance 1070 and ordinance 1202 and one plus we can have clean that up. That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, anything to add by the citizens or other staff? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve charter ordinance number 36. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? We'll start over here. Uh, what exactly is this doing? It's repealing. Or it's well, there's a purchasing, there we have a procedure for purchasing equipment, but it what was, were we not doing it now? Basically, what we're doing is we're correcting some repeal. The initial charter ordinance, I believe it was eight, correct, uh, was passed and established a procedure to purchase equipment through geo debt, uh, is what it amounted to. Laws changed in the state of Kansas and the, and the city passed a repealing ordinance, not a charter ordinance. Um, and then there, I think there was another ordinance that was passed, again, that was that 1202. So this is just an effort to clean up our char charter ordinances to be what they were intended to be all along. Uh, if you recall, we talked, I think, a few council meetings ago about just trying to um, better our purchasing procedures uh, and processes. So with that review, this was found. Um, so again, this is just cleaning up, I think, a little bit of an issue that we have. Thank you. Uh, and that was my question. This was come, this uh, uh, clarification was more or less housekeeping uh, that you found in your uh, working up the new current policy, and that will be a, a administrative policy that you'll follow now, not an ordinance or resolution. Yes, we're currently in the process that's been reviewed uh, by department heads um, to to get a, a policy that I think is uh, professional as well as um, empowering to the. Uh, the employees and department heads to have some um, level of discretion when making purchases for the city. Very good, and we won't have to uh, approve that, but you'll you'll educate us on that policy when you absolutely. Uh, and if it is uh, council's uh, prerogative, we can certainly bring that back as a, a governing body policy as well. Um, it's entirely up to you all. Right now, the purchasing policy that the city has in place. Uh, has never been approved by the city council. That's not to say it's uh, good or bad um, or indifferent. It's just about trying to follow suit with what we've done in the past year a little bit. Being more transparent. Thank you very much, Pam. Nothing else? Vote, please. Thompson? Yes. Gurley? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Becky? Yes. Kip? Yes. Wood? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Motion passes. Wow. <clears throat> On to uh, our reports for this evening. Uh, city Manager's report. Really quickly as I pulled up on my phone, um, uh, obviously evidenced by the fact that we're here. City Hall offices have been closed um, permanently. Uh, this comes as a result of some substantial water damage. I've included pictures in the city manager report just to help convey, uh, I think, the situation that the city, the city has been dealing with um, for a number of years, uh, decades, to be uh, forthright on that. The pictures don't do justice. No. You know, yeah. if, if there was cell division uh, included, I, I would have tried to do that. But, um, again, it's um, it's unfortunate, and I um, just. Uh, just like to thank the community for their patience that has been tried to uh, get everything up and running. I will say, as of today, we have been without phones now for two weeks, three weeks. Um, we do have a working phone line, so if you do call the main city line, that is working now. Uh, we are working on direct numbers. Again, that was uh, as a result of water damage in the city's electrical utility closet uh, that caused that to happen and at the, um, at the urging of uh, individuals that handle our phone system, they uh, again urge us to turn the power off on those phones, which that phone system is a uh, several decades old, so the ability for us to forward lines and to uh, do common things that most people do was not something that we're able to do. So. And is the new system in place now? Amber yes, so we um, Fortunately, we were in the process of moving to voice over IP, so that is, we are just doing that now. Um, 
and that is, is going very, very well. Uh, again, it's just a question of working with AT&T to port the lines to different directions. Um, so again, that's hopefully coming to a finality here fairly quickly, so you can call direct lines. But again, if anybody does need to make contact to see all the main office line is working with that. Um, I also included, uh, the mayor discussed this at a previous council meeting, but um, a project that is being looked at in Leavenworth County for a special use permit involving uh, Caw Valley Sand, a lot of the application materials um, um, I had provided to me, so I included that in uh, my report again for you all in the public to kind of understand what this project means as far as uh, traffic on K32 as well as Lauren Road in Bonner Springs. And then lastly, I just want to note that city offices will be closed on Memorial Day. That does push back um, trash, and that does push back the next city council meeting, which will be held on that Tuesday. So uh, with that, happy to answer any questions. Uh, we'll go ahead and move right into uh, city council items. And we'll start over here, sir. Um, <clears throat> John, just real quick, uh, and I realize that the difficulty of trying to get as much information out to the public because we are limited, you know, without a local newspaper, et cetera. Um, what has been the reception so far that you've been made aware of um, with people coming in other than them being a little bit inconvenienced? And, uh, as far as the relocation of City Hall yeah. is concerned? Um, you know, for the most part, I think people have been fairly accepting to the, the situation. Um, naturally, there's there's uh, instances where, where people are a bit miffed. Um, but again, um, the reason for it was, was strictly safety and health of the oh, employees, um, as well as finding a suitable location given the functionality of all that the city does. Uh, so again, we're fortunate to have this building um, and some spaces where we can uh, utilize with our technology, our servers, um, documents that we have to maintain, things like that. So uh, generally speaking, I think most people have been fairly um, receptive to the fact that this had to happen. Uh, no further questions. I have been impressed when I came in uh, to this building. Every question I had was answered. and. I was directed to places, and the, the fact that everybody is doing with cubicles in the back room and smiling, I have been impressed with that. Yeah. Are we able to find adequate storage for everything that has to come out of the old building? Or are we going to have to rent storage? I think we're going to be fine um, here. We've, we've moved some tables and chairs out of this building and then placed it at South Park. Um, but for the most part, we're, we're able to make do. We do have one um, staff employee that is located um, down at Public Works at the Tiblo Transit or Dispatcher. So we are running Tiblo Transit um, for the most part out of Public Works. Um, but beyond that, we, we've found that there's space here for most of the stuff. I will say there are things that we still are working to get out of City Hall, non-essential items, I, I guess I would call it, but again, items that we do need to retain for public protection. Thanks, sir. Appreciate the staff's willingness to work on top of each other for next year. Yeah. I know you had a lot, obviously, going on. I, I emailed you about Bill Storms and the, that. Uh, I don't know if you that got put on the back burner or what, but I think he's expecting a call back from me. So okay. I think last I think I called you directly. Yeah, yeah, I think I responded back to you regarding the. Yeah, and hand I, handler stuff. Yeah, and then as far as. Um, parking, there is no stop sign. Kansas Avenue, approximately 134th Street, um, there are no parking signs posted on each side of the street, so I think my, uh, I went out there personally drove the area, there still are no parking signs all the way down Kansas Avenue, east and west. I just think the space they may have changed um, at one point in time. So again, they're, they're spaced um, appropriately, um, and they're there currently. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Um, when it comes to the special use permit for the San Quarry, do you, either Mr. Mayor or Sean, uh, have you heard if they've scheduled it for a meeting? I believe it is June 
uh, I want to say it's 12, I believe. Um, I know I did contact Leavenworth County to um, verify that. The date is escaping me, but I know they pushed it back to their first meeting in June, which I believe is the 12th. So are, are we going to be expressing our concern with the increased traffic and the uh, perhaps the concerns that we have on our roads? I, what I can tell you I've done at this point um, is I've let the unified government know um, about the impact on Boring. Um, just to refresh everybody's memory, Boring is a street that is considered a county road. Yes, there are still, in fact, county roads. Um, it is part of the Leavenworth, or excuse me, the Loring service area. So we are contracted to uh, work to maintain that area. Um, so I did let Jeff Fisher there um, executive director of public works um, know about that um, but as far as any direction that you guys I, I would look for you guys if you want to um, send anything to Leavenworth County Planning Commission that would ultimately I think need to come from you individually all. or as a council that's yeah. entirely up to you all I wouldn't mind putting something together and have it at the next council because yeah. 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 you have a choice of routes well, if you go through that thing, that's the thing. Yeah. Is the two routes that yeah. the uh, who did the study, the traffic study, yeah. took no regard for population, for road conditions. It was all about what was going to be beneficial for their trucking company, yeah. at least amount of miles. And it was Route One and Route Four. Route One puts it going up 142nd Street. That road is not built. So the irony went in. Yeah. Especially if you're running the, the five axle, which I think I looked it up, and they're 80, uh, well, 40 tons, 80,000 pounds. That's a lot of weight on that road. So. That's a heck the other of thing, lot of trucks going on 32. I mean, well, I, what is our, um, what control or what, um, what do we have? Uh, I think if if you guys would like um, for us to. to formulate a letter of sorts, we can um, put that together and have it on the next council meeting um, without knowing the dates, so I'll just really quickly. If their meeting's not till June, we can do it at the second so okay. we can, I can put something together um, and then have you guys approve that, and it can come from you all or work with the mayor to put that together, um, mm -hmm. and then again, that's what you all would like to do because it sounds like there's concerns about traffic volume uh, weight uh, on our city uh, streets right. and I don't know um, what we um, what our capacity is uh, but like you made the example of 142nd as well as Shite Lane well, let's, say, let's face reality if you look at that we've all been in this business for long enough you know you're going to put numbers that look make it look good and when they they go we just down to oh 15 trucks an hour but do the math that is 31,000 loads you know every year 62,000 trips that's a lot of traffic on the so there there are other routes ones that take them around Bonner Springs or not through residential areas which all of them in Bonner Springs would take them through residential areas in um, 158 all the way north to 2440 and 2440 all the way uh, east to uh, what road is that? Um, uh, it'd be uh, 98 or 94 somewhere in there, or or uh, or uh, 435 down to Wood. Yeah. So there, there's there's roads that are rated would capacity well, much higher well, than what's right. interesting is there was one route that was actually only a mile longer, a mile and a half longer than what Route 1 and Route 4 is. That is, if they go south, catch 83rd Street, runs over to K7, which is Belt 4, and <laughs> that kind of traffic, Shawnee Mission Parkway, which again is built for those type of loads, 435, which is built for those loads. 83rd Street, is, is Street is not a four lane, but it is a much but you prove, yeah, it's, it's an approved road. Approved residential area, but, but again, they could go north to 100 on 158 or 166 all the way to the state avenue. Well, we could also legislate or make an ordinance for each road to only have XYZ weight weighted truck. Uh, you're getting into a lot of state yeah. statutes with uh, state highway K7 or uh, uh, K32 is a state highway, uh, and um, I don't know what our 
ability to control that is. They may state, yes, you're right, absolutely, we're going to come right down these public roads. I think it's anyway. just better to express our, our concerns. concerns. Yeah. I, I do know just that this is a concern that's also at least shared with um, um, individuals over in Edwardsville yeah. as well. So when it said, I read 15 to 20 truck, and then I read per hour, and I went, oh. That's when you start doing the math, it is. Yeah, uh, that was frightening. Well, we, we have to stay within our authority, and we want to be appropriate in those regards also and not restrict public use, but uh, look out for the assets that are under our jurisdiction. So uh, I'll work with Sean, and we'll get a letter that we'll bring back next meeting, and uh, Hopefully, provide that to Lebanon County uh, <coughs> planning. I think is where this next meeting is. Thank you. And then Other one other thing. <coughs> yes, the pun was just a happy coincidence. Um, on a lighter note, <laughs> how's the power doing in the building? Because I know you were without power without lights. Um, <laughs> we did have. Um, it was actually a few weeks ago a transformer. Actually, I think it's been a month or two ago a transformer did blow. Um, in the alleyway between Community Garden and, and this building. Um, so that was, uh, again, the case last week where the power went down towards the transformer um, blue. And that's, uh, I think we finally got that correct about 1 or 2 o'clock um, that day. So, um, but now, so we're going to work in right? the day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I just said that's, that's it. Very good. Uh, for the mayor's report this evening, I would really like to uh, uh, show my appreciation to the, all the city staff and administration on this uh, move. Um, uh, during this process, it was uh, it was a situation down at City Hall that I couldn't imagine having any of my own employees working in, let alone city employees. So it, I'm glad uh, that we were able to accommodate them with another Plan B. Bonner Springs uh, didn't stand for that, the B and Bonner didn't stand for Plan B, but we have had uh, other uh, facilities that had to be uh, um, moved out of, and uh, we are so fortunate here in Bonner Springs that we can uh, accommodate that. So uh, I'm very appreciative, and the uh, spirit of cooperation with the Parks and Rec Department is certainly not going to be unnoticed by me. They are. Uh, wonderful to have uh, as a part of our team so thank you all very much I appreciate it um, I think it's uh, shows how much it's needed in 1974 uh, the master plan uh, showed that we needed to consider a new city hall um, that city hall started in uh, I think parts of it were predate 1950 um, so it's been added on to and uh, I challenge not only this city council but future city councils to be more uh, uh, appropriate with our planning and long-term use of our facilities. Uh, we need to invest in these facilities. Water and uh, wastewater just happens to be in front of us tonight. But with our uh, fire department, after the police move out of that, we'll have to uh, respect that area and uh, certainly uh, improve it again as well as Parks and Rec are going to need some additional assistance for this community center after um, uh, the next phase uh, comes online. So um, uh, it's, it's something that the city of Bonner Springs hasn't done in the past, and we need to change that and address these things professionally, and our current administration is helping us do that. So we're moving in that direction. So uh, it's... It, it costs money, and that's we got to recognize that. Um, I a couple suggestions. I would remove the signage uh, from the old building and maybe get a big, big banner, as as big as legally possible. Uh, we have regulations. We have to <laughs> but and put it on the side, the side with an internet or something. City Hall relocated to three hundred. Um, there's a. A lot of people still uh, are recognizing that for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, please uh, it, uh, help educate the community without a newspaper. Like you said, it's very hard. Uh, I had someone say, well, couldn't we just put a tarp over it? And it's, I, <laughs> it, it, it just floored me to, 
to make it pretend. They just don't have an appreciation for how bad it was. So uh, if we can help the community with recognizing how bad it was, um, that I think that's how we can best best assist them. Um, it would take it would have taken a tarp the size of Sydney. Yeah. So uh, uh, other than that, uh, some of the not fun things that I got to do, I uh, participated in a proclamation for the Wyandotte County um, uh, Mental Health Services and uh, joined with um, Edwardsville and the Unified Government for a proclamation for Children's Mental Health Awareness and Mental Health Month. And we gave that out this last week. Also to recognize uh, Rise and Shine, which is the Bonner Springs Edwardsville USD 204 Education Foundation Spring Event. And it, uh, that's a group that does a lot of uh, wonderful work and is uh, uh, one of their main charges is to provide scholarships for uh, high school seniors. And this year I think they've given away or are in the process of giving away $35,000 worth of uh, scholarships. Uh, not only to uh, colleges and junior colleges but also to technical uh, education as well. And so that's a new aspect of uh, their uh, charge. So uh, if you would like to have an opportunity to go to that spring event, uh, there's information right here. Um, the night payment box, are you going to move that up here? Or? We are currently Thinking trying about to that? figure out a way to accommodate for that. So, no, no news. No news at the present. Very good. I, that's a good idea. Don't forget that. Yeah, there it is. I would imagine that uh, whole area will be uh, very um, useful in mobilizing the new construction. It's, it's my understanding that that will have a uh, positive impact both on the time frame of the project as well as the cost. Woohoo! <laughs> not able to mobilize um, multiple times. So. Again, a silver lining to all of that is that there will be a, a benefit to the city. Very good. So we're in a wrecking ball party soon. Slow chips. Yeah, gold sledgehammers. Gold sledgehammers. There you go. Uh, I have nothing else uh, and don't want to delay our continued uh, workshop, so unless anybody has a question for me. Quickly. Yes, please. You were mentioning about the banner. Um, uh -huh. have we, I know you like to have stuff on the signboard. On that too. We put it up on the sideboard about City Hall. Having closed. Good idea. So uh -huh. we, also, we also have a local sign maker. And with the printing something, something like they got a couple of names, but they're kind of like across the street. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was going to say, are they sitting here? I didn't see them. <laughs> no, Midwest printing. Thank you. Was it was Midwest? I thought it was nationwide. Uh, I have one question about the Speedway or Stealth Bomberland. Have you heard anything more on that? Um, other than that, there is a planning commission meeting, I believe, next next week. Um, so that will be heard at that point in time as far as, oh, I can't remember the particulars that are being heard, but the next planning commission will be discussed. Okay. And then it will be brought forward uh, the following. The items meeting um, council actually brought forward, I believe, on the 28th. Um, that's just me through that because I'm not uh, <coughs> sure right off the top of my head, but whatever the time frame is, it's there has elapsed. And that was yeah, because I was uh, looking here and it says <coughs> that um, um, the uh, preliminary plat's been uh, had, uh, getting the talk. The preliminary plat has been approved with the special use permit, rezoning, and variance request um, are pending. Now, are all three of those, do you know, I mean, Coming before the P and Z, or the uh, the rezoning, the, mm -hmm. the special use and the preliminary. Yes, those three would be the ones that. Yeah, the special work. use rezoning, and then the there's a variance. Variance, yeah. yeah. So all come those together three in one require a public hearing. Okay. Good. Very good. And then uh, I don't think we adjourn. We'll go right straight back into the workshop, and then do we adjourn after the workshop? No, I think you can adjourn this meeting. Yeah, we're it's not going to do anything on that. Right. I want to do that next meeting. Okay. Yeah. And we're adjourned. And we'll go right ahead. Okay.